Had another DAP machine come in for service. This time it's a Tascam DA30 Mark II. And this one here, apparently the brake, the brake pads came off and the owner of it manufactured some new ones out of a pencil eraser. It's uh, not playing, so he says. Press play and it shuts down. So let's see what's wrong with this one and see if we can get it going. Today I have a Tascam DA30 Mark II DAT in for service. So before even turning it on, let's take the top off and do a quick inspection. Okay, the unit's apart, let's turn it on. Now open it and just observe what it does when I load the cassette. Okay, uh, I saw some tape slack there when it first started up, like the reel wasn't turning. Take up spool is not turning. You notice that, right? We have some sound on it, but. You see? Sounds like the, the take up and supply spool are not turning. I try to rewind the tape and nothing's happening. How about fast forward? So it's not rewinding the tape. The spools are not turning. It's a mechanical problem. Let's just uh, open this one up and hopefully I won't end up with an eaten tape, which I just did, as you saw. It ate my tape. This is a tape that got damaged before and I had to fix it, so that's why I use this one because this tape itself here has been damaged in the past. Spool this tape back onto its shell or into the shell. And good old screwdriver bits are perfect for spooling these small tapes back into their cassette. Perfect size. This also works for 8mm videotapes, but not for mini DV, as their hub size is a little bit smaller. Standard bit. So this machine has a problem with the take up and supply hub, so let's take the deck apart and see why it's failing, why it's not turning. So we need to remove the deck to do that, so let's just power it down. I'm going to remove the screws that hold the deck in place and lift the entire deck out so I can take it out of the box and work on it. And to do that, we remove a couple screws that hold the deck in place, namely this one. I've worked on DA40s and DA30s before. This is my first 30 Mark II. I think this one comes out on here as well. Probably a couple more at the front. And now we can unplug the mechanism. From the main board. Always grip these plugs by the plug with your fingernail. Don't grip the wires or you could rip them right out of the plug. Believe me, I've done that before and it's not fun when you gotta solder the wire back down to the pin that's still in the uh, in the socket. have I think the plugs out there may be one or two more that need to come out this this one here needs to come out as well this, it's a good idea to film when you're removing these all these plugs and cables and stuff so that if you forget where they go you've got a reference as to where they go 
ones are undone, and then there's just this one here. There. And that should uh, free it up. Oh, yeah. Take out this zip tie that someone's put on here. This is somebody's put a white zip tie on. Okay. Now, I can work on the mechanical part of the deck, and we can just move the other box out of the way for now. Next, we'll remove the actual mechanism from the loading tray. Three screws. This is where the little microscopic belt goes, the loading belt down here on this one. And that lifts off the mechanism. Be one more plug over here for the preamp. And now we can put this aside. Now we're down to the bare mechanism here. And to see why the uh, the tape drive is not working. Now the guy told me that the little felt pads, the brakes, fell off of it and he tried to make his own. And it looks like he's done one here. Whether that's the problem or not. But it wasn't attempting to take up the tape when the uh, unit was was playing. So let's just run this through its, its mode and see why it's not working. Might help if I don't knock the belt off. sitting in its track properly. I think that belt, I'm going to go back and look at the tape. I think that belt wasn't sitting on the, on the, the, uh, the, the, it's a tooth belt. I think that belt may have been just sitting like that and not turning. Now look, go back, go back and look at the tape. It's hard to tell whether, <clears throat> I was looking at it and it almost looks like it might have been not seated. You see, it's not turning if we look now. It almost looks like it was seated like that. I was looking at the tape and it almost looks like it was seated like that. And that is not turning the gear. Because it needs to be seated down below. Because it popped off so easy when I moved this. Like as soon as I moved the belt, the belt. See, that's how it's supposed to go. If we look at the footage when I first took it apart, and I'll, I'll zoom in on it, but when I first took it apart, I swear to God that this thing was sitting like this. Look back at the footage. I think it was sitting like that and not in the groove of the pulley. And that would certainly cause a fault. You see, there's a, there's a lip on that pulley. You shouldn't see the belt. And I think if we look at the shots from when I first took this thing apart, that belt was clearly sitting on top of that pulley and that would certainly cause this thing to eat because as you can see when I first moved the belt when it, when it came off of my hand I was looking at this side but the the, the um, drive was not turning and if we look at it now when I move the belt you'll see that the uh, right the drive mechanism is turning now I think that's all that was wrong with this was that uh, when this went back together that belt either it slipped out on its own or the last person who worked on it didn't seat it properly in the groove but that's good that's good because that means I can put this thing together and uh, maybe that's all that's wrong with this one and that's that's a good one for for people to keep an eye out make sure that these um, mechanisms is not uh, needing to be lubricated they get gummed up on these ones but this one looks to be in pretty free condition and that's turning nice and smoothly as well 
I'm going to put this back together and we're going to try it and that may be all that's wrong with that and that'll make the guy that owns this a very happy camper because he's got some uh, tapes that he needs to play back. See how it looks now? You can see the black. If we look back at the shots from before, I'm pretty sure you'll see the orange belt sitting on top. There's a ridge on the pulley that holds the belt in its track. It won't come off easily unless you really try. As I say, I think it was sitting, I'm pretty sure it was sitting like that. Let me get the box and we'll plug this back in and take a listen and see whether whether the problem is resolved. You got a few plugs to plug back in on this one. The plugs themselves are keyed so they only go into the correct plug. They're different sizes so it shouldn't be too difficult to figure out where the plugs go. That doesn't go there. This one I think goes over here. And this one goes down here. when they said that uh, when they said that the goes on there and this one goes over here I think that one goes there and this other one goes over here they weren't joking when they said you feel the second COVID shot for more than the first one I had my second dose today, and uh, I'm noticing it already. Only had it four and a half hours ago, and uh, yeah, yeah, I already notice it already. My arm is getting sore. I didn't have that the first time, but this time, my arm is getting sore. When I move it a certain way, I certainly notice it. Okay, let's uh, just put one or two screws in here just to hold this. Uh, mechanism in place a bit. One should do it. Let's uh, pop a tape in this machine and see if it does anything.
Ah, uh, can't play that. I'll find some royalty free stuff. We'll play that. Already. Better already. It didn't eat the tape. My royalty free content. Beatles. Nope, can't play that. Music Bakery. Ah, I can play this one. Play. See how it sounds. That's the shuttle dial. I think this machine is very similar. It has a different display. This has a different display than the DA40. The DA40's got a, a, a alphanumeric display. I'll show you the front. So the DA40, the digital display, is um, counter, absolute time, program time, remaining time. Um, this one displays hours, minutes, seconds, and the DA40 will also display, in addition to this, it will also display frames. So you get your... your frame counter. This should take me to the next track on the tape. Alright, that's working. We'll go to the next track. Observe the mechanism running. Next track. Don't need it that loud. Sounds a lot louder to you guys because the camera's a little closer to the speakers. I was doing an archive job for a client and I got some VHS tapes in which are in absolutely the worst the worst shape I'm going to I'm going to show you guys. It, 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 this will probably amaze people that people would actually do this. They would treat their tapes like this, but uh, this client is going to be paying a little bit to have their 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 tapes all transferred over because of the restoration work I've got to do on the cassette. I'll, I'll make a little short video to show you guys what I got to do. This is a type of crap that you have to sometimes deal with. And uh, just because some people, I guess, uh, live in pig size or 
They just don't really give, give a damn about anything. If I tried to put this tape into my machine, as it is, I'd be uh, replacing my machine. Because the tape is in that bad of shape. I'm basically going to have to take the tape out of the shell and put it into a new shell. And I'll show you, I'll make a video on it, because I'm not going to put it in with this one, but I'll make a video on it. But this, this one here takes a cake. I mean, I've seen, I've seen bad tapes before, but I've never seen tapes in the condition that the, uh, the one I'll show you. And, and it's not just this one. There, there was a whole bag of tapes, and most of them are in shape that's as bad as this. And as it sits now, if I, if I, well, you'll see when I, when I show it to you. If I tried to play the tape in the state that it is now, I'd be replacing my machine. There's no question, and I'll leave it at that, and you guys will see. But you can, you can use your imagination as to what possibly could be wrong. Anyway, this one is fixed. We'll just put it through a few more paces, like fast forward and rewind. So, full fast forward. To the end of the tape. There we go. Rewind. It should be stopping in three, two, one, zero. There we go. Beginning of the tape. This one's done. The guy who owns this one's gonna be more than happy. and open. And now I get something to listen to that I can't play for you guys, but I will enjoy it. I have a digital copy of Abbey Road on this tape. So I'm going to enjoy this. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.